The music that you're hearing now has been composed by one of the world's oldest musicians. But who is this composer? Well, you're looking at them. This music was composed using the DNA code from these plants, more specifically, the Rose Damascus. Edinburgh-based pianist and composer Stuart Mitchell has been researching the properties of music and DNA now for over eight years and has made some very interesting discoveries. Since the discovery of DNA in the 50s, um, uh, they've been very busy um, uh, bringing uh, the world the data, a database of all the animals we see around us here, ducks, trees, plants, flowers, and uh, we can access this database on the internet these days. So the, really the challenge for us is to find um, the most impactful sequences and translate them into music. The concept of DNA music originated in Japan when a partially blind scientist, Dr. Susumu Ono, assigned the plant's amino acids a particular tonal frequency and pitch and started to listen to DNA rather than read it. Around 14 years ago, um, the discovery of uh, DNA music uh, was really developed uh, by friends of mine uh, in America, Susan Alexander and David Diemer, who really discovered that uh, DNA is an acoustic biomatrix um, reliant upon sound and acoustics. So we've come in to uh, translate the code of life into acoustic uh, music that people can appreciate uh, for what it is. Um, we call it the symphony of life. As a composer, Stuart takes the DNA data of a plant and translates it in a way that can be heard as music. But how exactly does this work? Well, it's quite simple actually, and it's all done in the comfort of his own home. We brought you here um, to be witness to how we translate um, DNA into music or tones. Um, and this will give people a little bit of understanding of uh, really how simple the process is. Stuart uses an online database known as Uniprot, which is home to hundreds of thousands of DNA sequences of the world's living organisms. We can take the rose as an example. So we type in Rose Damascus into the search engine. The DNA that we're really going to focus on is the aromatic L-amino acid decarboxylase, the data that is responsible for the scent producing compounds of, of the flower. Uh, because if, if everybody you think of a flower, the first thing you think about is how it smells. Now, it uh, gives us this sequence here of letters, uh, which are a translation of the DNA data. Uh, we simply copy this from the database and we put it into this BioToMidi editor. This program is what Stuart uses to translate the amino acids onto a map of 22 musical notes and frequencies. Along the top of the map are all the amino acids which, for the sake of the demonstration, Stuart has put into the key of C major. This is the DNA ACTG uh, working. It just goes round four bases all the time and that four letters produces this protein melody and this is all uh, back to the, the rose damascus flower and you can listen to them both together now it sounds pretty raw and and untreated uh, there at the moment and that's why we save this as a MIDI file and then reopen it in a professional scoring program like Sibelius. Sibelius is used by most modern day arrangers and composers. This program allows Stuart to take a more artistic approach by assigning instruments to the piece and giving it some presentation. It's uh, really interesting to think what kind of instruments you would give to a rose. Um, uh, in my mind, it's, it's a flute uh, that really shows off the beautiful romance of the, the flower. And um, finally, uh, as a composer, you can end up uh, adding uh, uh, beautiful strings to it, uh, to bringing the melody out uh, like a composer does. Uh. <laughs> I 
And that's all come uh, from being on that database for about 10 minutes and the aromatic calamino being um, responsible for the scent production and colour of the flower is now responsible for that beautiful melody. So what you smell from a flower is what you can hear in this music. Stuart has created an album featuring all of his DNA to music compositions called Musical Life of Plants. This music has been used and found to be very helpful in aromatherapy treatments. But are there any real benefits to this music? Uh, one of the, the, the future experiments we want to do with the botanic gardens in Edinburgh is, is to see if this music has beneficial effects on the plants themselves. Uh, whether or not they are uh, going to be more fruitful, uh, healthier, richer in colour, richer in scent, uh, or um, you know, uh, non-plus by it. But uh, in our understanding, um, that if these are the frequencies of the flower themselves, then th there is a very good chance that uh, uh, this will be extremely beneficial to the plant. Uh, we know, um, as human beings, that, that, that music uh, really makes you feel um, very calm, uh, very uh, uh, spiritual, and you, you, we have a great affinity with sound. Uh, and that's why hum humanity loves music so much. Uh, flowers are no different. Whatever results the botanics experiment produces, one thing will always remain clear. That within the DNA of all living things lies a single strand of code that is just singing out to us, waiting to be heard. And with enough time and care, this score of life can be presented in such a way that Stuart hopes will one day allow people to appreciate nature in a way that they never have before. It's been a lovely journey to, to, to discover this uh, music in plants um, and where it's leading us now into, into the human genome. This is the most wonderful thing about uh, the DNA music is, is finding a sequence that's really going to impact humanity and heal humanity in some kind of way and also bring an aesthetic um, appreciation for all life and not just the, the human, uh, human disregard that we have for it uh, these days. Um, this is our goal and this is what we're trying to um, breathe an awareness of into, the, into human society.